Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Coming up tonight, updates on two crashes in Lincoln. One, sending a motorcyclist to the hospital in critical condition. Plus, as Nebraska and the entire country fight an opioid crisis, millions of dollars are coming to the state for help, but first. I don't know much about it, but it, we were all ordered out. Nebraska seniors are having to pack up and move out. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. In your golden years, the last thing you should be worrying about is losing your home. That's right. Unfortunately for many older Nebraskans, this has become a reality. Channel 8's Ariana Martinez joins us from an assisted living home in Adams, Nebraska, to share why this is happening to so many. Nursing homes and assisted living facilities across the state continue to close, leaving many residents and their families wondering where they're going to live. I spoke with Helen, a 97 year old Nebraskan who recently had to leave her facility as they closed their doors. We were all ordered out just recently, about a month or two ago. It hasn't been very long. Boy, we were anxious to know where are we going to go. Uh, they all went directions in <laughs> different directions. Helen is 97 years old. She doesn't have much family in Nebraska, and she recently had to leave the facility where she had been living for nearly seven years as they closed their doors. I had a nice closet space wow. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they took good care of me too. For residents with little family close by, the staff starts to become their support system. Do you feel like we're becoming your family here at Goldcrest? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You're making yeah. new friends and finding new people to be... Oh, I'm home. trying my best. <laughs> when a facility closes, many scramble to find a new home. Goldcrest was only able to take in two residents from Kensington at the time. We only had two beds open, so we weren't able to help assist much in the actual transition, so we had more interest than what we did beds. So why are these facilities closing? Really the number one driving factor has been access to staffing and the ability to pay staff a competitive wage. There is one bill that would give funding to help increase provider rates. There is also a chance these facilities could receive American Rescue Plan Act funds to help gain and retain staff. The funding is so critical because we do have others that are on the brink and I and I talk to people frequently and they say it might be too late. The funding is necessary to change the long-term care spectrum in Nebraska and to keep facilities out in rural areas so that there's the care that they deserve and need for um, the residents. There is something we can all do to help facilities stay open. There's so many jobs in, uh, in a facility from housekeeping to activities that you can work one day a week and make a huge difference. Even with all of the changes happening in their lives, the new residents here at Goldcrest are happy and are staying positive. Reporting in Adams, Ariana Martinez, Channel 8 News. All right, thank you very much, Ariana. About $100 million is headed to Nebraska after the state was included in an opioid settlement. It comes as we continue to battle the opioid epidemic. Today marked the first day of a special committee dedicated to finding the right place for that money to go. It consists of officials from the state patrol, UNMC, and even recovered opioid addicts. Attorney General Doug Peterson said this group of people is the perfect combination of experts to make sure that everyone who needs help fighting addiction can get it. The committee today is a statewide committee. Uh, it includes people in the, the actual treatment area, people from counties and cities. Really important that we spread out the treatment options across the state, that it not be east-centric, but actually address anyone who's dealing with addiction. Over the next few months, the committee will figure out exactly where the money is needed and distribute it later this fall. We'll have much more on this story coming up in our newscast at 6 o'clock. Now to an update on an early morning crash after a driver went the wrong way on a one way. It happened around 5 a.m. today near South Cotner and O Street. Police say the car going the wrong way hit another vehicle. And after the crash, they say the person driving the wrong way uh, vehicle ran off. No word if that person was caught. Uh, we have checked with police. The investigation is continuing. A Panama, Nebraska man is still in critical condition tonight. His motorcycle collided with a vehicle in Lincoln. LPD says the two vehicle collision happened just before 630 yesterday on 11th Street between F and G streets. 
A local store owner shared their surveillance video of the crash with us. Now we do want to warn you, some viewers might find the video disturbing, but here it is. Take a look. The video shows a black sedan driving southbound on 11th Street. Yeah, it makes a, a quick U-turn right here and in comes the motorcycle, collided with the vehicle, uh, sending that 41-year-old biker flying. He was rushed to a local hospital in critical condition. Now, tonight, we're going to hear from one of the people you see running there to help him. That's coming up tonight on our newscast at 6 o'clock. There was a barn fire west of Seward today. Several volunteer fire departments responded. It was near 350th and McKelvey Roads. That's out near Tamora. The call came in around 9 a.m. Seward, Tamora, Goner, and Staplehurst fire departments all responded, and eventually the barn did collapse. No word on what caused the fire yet or any damage amounts, but thankfully no injuries were reported. There was also a house fire in Northeast Lincoln, and it caused nearly a quarter of a million dollars in damage. That's right. Here's video of the intense flames. Take a look at that. This happened near 62nd and Judson yesterday afternoon. Lincoln Fire and Rescue say someone was working on a car when it caught fire in the garage. Total damage, yeah, right around $225,000. One person was taken to the hospital, but is expected to be okay. All right, uh, now to the latest on the mass shooting that happened in Sacramento, California, that left six dead and a dozen others wounded. Police still searching for the shooters responsible. Meanwhile, the outcry against gun violence grows louder. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest. Just one day after that shooting that killed six and injured a dozen others in downtown Sacramento, police announcing the arrest of one suspect believed to be involved. Investigators taking 26-year-old Dondre Martin into custody Monday morning on assault and illegal firearm possession. We need probably about another five or ten officers. The barrage of gunshots going off just after 2 a.m. on Sunday before a crowd of people near a popular nightlife area. According to police, the crime scene stretching across at least two city blocks. More than 100 shell casings found at the scene. We know that a large fight took place just prior to the shootings, and we have confirmed that there are multiple shooters. By Monday afternoon, police say they'd already served search warrants at three homes and have recovered at least one handgun. Investigators receiving more than 100 photos and videos to help in their investigation. Pamela Harris says her son Sergio, a father of young daughters, was among those who were killed. It's a hurtful feeling to know that you seen your child that one day and then they're gone the next day. This is the latest incident in a string of recent mass shootings. In a statement overnight, President Joe Biden demanding more action on guns, saying Congress urgently needs to ban ghost guns, require background checks for all gun sales, ban assault weapons and high capacity magazines, and repeal gun manufacturers immunity from liability. The mayor of Sacramento echoing the president's plea. It is beyond time to have a sane conversation about guns in America. We have a sickness. Until they catch these people, I'm not going to be able to process anything. This has got to stop. This has been going on for too long. It's not just Sacramento. It's all over. And police have identified the six who were killed. They also say they found a stolen handgun at the scene and that surveillance cameras may have captured part of the shooting. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. And back here at home, let's get a check with uh, Chief Meteorologist John Dishour with your first forecast. Not a bad Monday here. We had uh, sunshine, decent temps. Yeah, that's right. Uh, although, you know, this time of the year in April, our normal high temperature is 62 degrees, so we were actually falling in just a little bit below that today, but still not bad. Uh, we've made up to 60 degrees officially this afternoon in Lincoln, and that's the case right now where we are uh, at. It's 61 in Beatrice, 62 in Aurora. 64 though in Grand Island and it's 65 degrees right now in Kearney. So a nicer, little warmer and nicer out that direction uh, with lots of sunshine across the entire area. You can see some high thin cirrus clouds that are drifting from west to east across the uh, southeast corner of the state and look back to the west. You can see there are more clouds coming. Those will come in later on tonight as our uh, as skies will begin to increase with clouds. That's happening ahead of a cold front that's currently moving out of the uh, Rocky Mountains or moving through the Rocky Mountains and it'll start to come our way for tomorrow. Bring with it a chance for a few scattered showers, but also 
a nice little warm up ahead of the cold front tomorrow afternoon. Now for the rest of this evening, we'll see our temperatures holding still in the 60s at 6 o'clock, 54 degrees by 8, and then the clouds will start to arrive starting at 10 o'clock, only down to 49 degrees. We'll talk about how cold it gets tonight. Also the chance for some rain tomorrow and hang on to your hats. Uh, it's going to turn very windy over the next several days with almost daily chances for rain. We'll detail all of that for you coming up in my storm alert team forecast. All right, thank you very much, John. Now to the latest on the war in Ukraine, a growing number of world leaders, including President Biden, calling for war crime investigations. Ukraine's President Zelensky describes the killings of civilians as, quote, a concentrated evil. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. President Biden is calling for a war crime trial as Ukraine accuses Russia of mass killings of civilians in a suburb outside Kyiv. Ukrainian officials say the bodies of at least 410 civilians were recently discovered in Bucha, many with their hands bound and shot at close range. I think it is a war crime and we have to gather all the detail so this can be an actual have a war crime trial. This guy is brutal. The mayor of Bucha says hundreds are now buried in mass graves. Authorities have brought us to what looks like the grave, the hastily dug grave of what they say is the family of the local mayor here. They didn't agree to cooperate with the Russians, they say, so they were executed. I'm looking now, I'm not going to turn the camera around, but I am looking now at the bodies of four people partially submerged uh, in the sand. But it's atrocities like these that Ukraine really wants the world to take notice of now. Ukrainian President Zelensky touring the destruction there. You know, see. Zelensky saying these are war crimes and they will be recognized by the world as genocide. Russia claims videos showing these atrocities are fake. But a growing number of Western nations also calling the atrocities war crimes, just like the indiscriminate shelling that has killed so many civilians. The latest in the second largest city of Kharkiv, killing at least seven and injuring 34. Russian forces also attacking Odessa from the air hitting critical infrastructure facilities and three fuel depots. Though Russia has vowed to scale back operations in and around Kyiv, the White House fears this war is far from over. I think there's a lot of evidence that Putin is simply taking his troops out of the northern part of the country to redeploy them to the eastern part of the country to relaunch a battle there. The State Department says they'll continue to ramp up the pressure on Putin. President Biden also considering more sanctions, though he declined to offer specifics. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Still to come on the news tonight, fierce debates today in the Senate over Supreme Court nominee Katanji Brown-Jackson. That story and your full forecast after the break. Women's Health.
Now to the latest on the confirmation of Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court. The Senate Judiciary Committee is set to vote on setting her nomination to the full Senate. The big question though, how much Republican support is she going to get? Here's ABC's Alex Prashay. Today, ahead of a confirmation vote, a fierce debate within the Senate Judiciary Committee over Supreme Court nominee Ketanji Brown Jackson. Judge Jackson may be a fine woman, but she has built her career as a far left activist. Judge Jackson is not far, far from the mainstream. Based on her policy and her philosophy, and I think on these core issues, she is just dead wrong. How qualified do you have to be double Harvard? How qualified do you have to be clerking at all levels of, of, of the federal judiciary? How qualified do you have to be three times confirmed by the Senate in a bipartisan manner? The White House confident about their nominee. What I know is she will get enough votes to get confirmed. Bottom line, Democrats have the votes in the full Senate to confirm Judge Jackson without Republican support. And right now, her confirmation would be bipartisan. Republican Senator Susan Collins has said that she would vote along with Democrats to confirm. But before that can happen, Judge Jackson must first get past a vote in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Today, a key moment there with Republican Senator Chuck Grassley. Having carefully studied her record, unfortunately, I think she and I have fundamental different views on the role of judges and the role that they should play in our system of government. Because of those disagreements, I can't support her nomination. Grassley's decision means we can expect an evenly split vote in the committee at which point Majority Leader Chuck Schumer would step in and bring the vote straight to the full Senate. But this afternoon, a delay. We have a problem. Democrat Judiciary Committee member Senator Alex Padilla delayed on a flight from LAX due to a passenger medical emergency. <coughs> Democrats, depending on his vote, opting to recess. The committee could push this vote to tomorrow. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. No. Your Storm Alert Team forecast with Chief Meteorologist John DeSauer. Not too bad of a day as we are between weather systems. One off to our east, another one off to our west. And this is the one that's going to impact us through the day tomorrow. As temperatures surge ahead of it. And then the cold front itself is actually going to bring a few scattered showers to the area as we go late morning and through the early evening hours. Now around here today, things have looked pretty nice. This is a look at the visible satellite imagery, just like you'd see it if you're taking it with a Polaroid picture. If people still take Polaroid pictures uh, from 22,000 miles up into space looking at the Earth. And we've got just a few high thin cirrus clouds drifting overhead. But look back to the west and you can see a lot more in the way of clouds coming our way. Uh, our skies will begin to increase with clouds as we go through the overnight hours. A live look right now from Schoen's Roofing and Beatrice off of the southwest showing some nice sunshine out there. We've got some shadows coming off some of the vehicles as they're driving through town. It's currently 61 degrees in Beatrice. Same down in Wymore. Uh, northern portions of the county at 63 degrees at Highway 77 and 41. Fairbury coming in at 62. Take you north into Lancaster County right now. We're sitting right around 60 degrees. A little cooler in Firth and a little cooler as well at Branch Oak Lake. Head over towards Seward at 60 degrees there. It's 60 as well in Garland. 59 in Milford, 62 for those of you in Utica, 61 in New York, and as we head out towards the Tri-Cities, temperatures starting to cool off just a little bit. Uh, it was 65 degrees in Kearney, now down to 63, 62 in Shelton, 62 in Donovan, and 64 degrees in Grand Island, and 62 in Hastings, which by the way, I want to mention this evening in Hastings, if any of you have an interest in becoming a storm spotter, the National Weather Service from Hastings will be uh, conducting a, or teaching a class tonight at 6.30 at the Hastings Museum in town, so head out there. It's, it's a free class to take. They it usually lasts about 90 minutes, and it's fascinating to learn more and more about the thunderstorms and what they're looking for and how you can report severe weather onto them. For us this evening, we'll see our temperatures going from 60 degrees at 6 o'clock. We'll be dropping down into the 40s and eventually into the upper 30s to low 40s tomorrow morning. Uh, down to 39 at the airport in Lincoln, probably in town, about 41. 39 in Beatrice, 40 in Seward. Winds tonight will be out of the south, 6 to 13 miles per hour. That's ahead of the cold front coming in. Now we're going to see a lot of clouds around tomorrow, so expect to see mainly cloudy skies if not overcast. Some scattered showers will be possible as early as let's say about 11 o'clock in Lincoln and the scattered showers will continue as we head towards the afternoon. Not heavy downpours by any means, but enough where you may have to turn the windshield wipers on once or twice. By 3 o'clock, we're looking at temperatures being the lower to mid 60s and that's still the case as we get towards 5 and 6 o'clock and it's about this time as we go to 7 o'clock, I think the chances for showers begins to uh, wane pretty quickly. 66 degrees for a high temperature tomorrow in Lincoln, up to 68 degrees in Beatrice, 65 degrees in New York,
work. Winds tomorrow eventually shifting to out of the northwest behind the cold front to, at times gusting to 35 miles per hour. Now not a lot of precipitation expected. Stormcast only spitting out a few hundredths of an inch. The thing we are going to watch out for tomorrow is an increased fire danger. Uh, the what conditions are not going to be good for tomorrow. Winds will be gusty. We've got drought like conditions so the vegetation is dry. And you can see by 3 o'clock for much of the state suggesting possible high and even extreme conditions, especially as you head out towards the southwestern corner of the state and that threat will continue on through the evening and that's why a red flag warning is in effect until from 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon through 10 o'clock tomorrow evening for much of the state of Nebraska. Seven day forecast cooling off Wednesday and Thursday behind the cold front and behind this weather system. It's going to remain windy as well. Scattered showers on a daily basis, but we'll be high, having highs only in the upper 40s by Thursday afternoon. Mid 50s by Friday. Right now Saturday looks fantastic for, uh, for a college football game or for, for the spring game. 67 degrees, 78 degrees by Sunday and next week, early next week, we could have temperatures in the lower and even perhaps mid 80s before another cold front comes down and starts to cool us off as we head towards the end of the following week. Well, that's, that's perfect for the spring. Game. <laughs> it is and I'm appreciative though of the rain chances in there. We still need that. Our grass is so dry. And house. unfortunately the rain that comes tomorrow is not going to be enough to do a whole lot to it. But hey, at this point, any bits a good bit. Exactly. I'm hopeful. <laughs> Thanks, John. A positive day on Wall Street today. The Dow gaining 104 points. NASDAQ is up 271. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. This week, Ukrainian forces battling to retake
Finally tonight, here's something you don't see every day. A baby seal in the middle of a roadway. It happened in Southampton, New York on mm -hmm. Sunday. Some people called police after they uh, saw the seal wandering through a parking lot. It made its way near a hotel before it was rescued from a traffic circle. The New York Marine Resource Center had a team come retrieve the baby seal and it was brought to a rehab center. The program director of the center says seal season is approaching. He says uh, harbor seals usually rest on rocks and beaches and something like this is uncommon. So hmm. as you said, not something you see every day, but I'll tell you what, it's good to have people there to uh, help take care of it. And yeah. like we said, it's in rehab now. Just got so. a little lost. A little lost. A that's little. Right. <laughs> All right, John, can we get one final check of our weather tonight? Yeah, not too bad this evening. We got clear skies. That will be the case at least for a few more hours. As later on tonight, we'll start to notice the clouds increasing. Uh, 54 degrees by 8 o'clock. 49 degrees by 10. We'll eventually have lows mainly in the low 40s. And then tomorrow, look for overcast skies. Maybe just a little warmer before a cold front passes. But it's going to turn very windy starting tomorrow and continuing on through Thursday. There will also be a few scattered showers as we go through uh, late tomorrow morning. In the Lincoln area specifically, I think probably between about 11 o'clock in the morning through 7 o'clock in the evening will be the best chance for seeing some scattered showers. Don't expect heavy rain, but just again, just some light stuff to maybe just get your windshield uh, wet enough to have to turn the windshield wipers on. All right. Thank you, John. And thank you all for joining us. World News uh, with David Muir is up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. At Comfort Made Mattress Factory, we build each mattress specifically for you, right here in our locally owned store. We can even make his side different than hers, backed by our lifetime comfort guarantee.